Okay. So we'll, um, inshallah, yeah, we'll just make a start and um, just continue from where we were last week. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, na rasulillah, wa alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Thumma ma ba'ad, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem, bismillahi rahmanir rahim. So we were moved on to our fourth st- uh, story. Fourth, no, fifth story. Fifth story, okay, this should be five. This should be five, yeah, because it's story number five. So story number five, the messenger which we started last week, we started this story, if you remember. So this story, it covers Surah 73 to 114 in the Quran. So we have now moved on to the last story. So last week, story number five, the messenger, we started with Surah Al-Muzammil, if you remember. So the messenger is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this story, it starts with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Surah number 73. And we said that he is Al-Muzammil. He is the one wrapped up in a blanket. He is the one wrapped up in a blanket. And we talked about this a bit. We talked about, you know, the benefits of the, the Hajj, the night prayer. And so just wanted to give the difference before we um, g- carry on. With this one, Surah number 73, Al-Muzammil, the one wrapped up, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one wrapped up in a blanket, in comfort. So we slightly modified the slide, so we'll just explain it. He's wrapped up in a blanket in comfort, but stand for the Hajjid prayer, to remember Allah. And he was also Al-Muddathir, he was also the one covered. So there's two two terms that Allah SWT describes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with. He describes him as Al-Muzammil, Wa alaikum salam, if you're doing well. He describes him as Al Muzammil, the one who's wrapped up. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him as Al Muddathir, the one covered. So, what's the difference between the, uh, these two, just to help us, um, just to help us sort of um, remember? So, the way we can uh, understand this is Surah Al Muzammil, the one wrapped up. Just imagine if, um, you know, when you wrap something up, uh, if you wrap, you wrap something up, um, you wrap somebody in a blanket it's more out of love like you know to comfort that person so it's like a caring sort of thing so al-muzammil uh, prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he's wrapped up in a blanket allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that you know there, there, there was a certain an element of fear as well and a sort of an element of comfort from the side of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa um the fact that he was in the daytime he had to go out and he had to tell people about uh worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell a very difficult crowd the Quraysh, that you must worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and be patient. In the daytime, he's got a lot, very, a lot of hard work to do. How does he prepare for this task? So at night, because he's wrapped up in a blanket, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, sort of saying, you know, come out of that comfort zone. You know, the one wrapped up, yeah, you have muzammil. But stand for prayer, stand for the tahajjud prayer, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is going to help you in your task in the daytime. So this is... Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sort of giving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a solution on how to um, do your difficult task in the day. And this is something we can learn from. So he's wrapped in a blanket. So when you wrap some, when you wrap something up, when you give somebody a blanket, it's out of sort of love and comfort. He was also, as well as al-Muzammil, he was also al-Muddathir. He was also the one covered up. And this covering up is more out of being very scared. Because as we started talking about this, the second surah, uh, al-Muddathir, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is this was the se- second revelation after Alak. You know, after the uh, after the the revelation started. This is the se- this is the second surah which was revealed was Al Mudathir. And um, okay, well done for that, Isa. Okay, and um, this we said that what happened was so Al Mudathir. This surah was revealed when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He, um, you know, when uh, Alak, Surah Al Alak was revealed to him, and then a few weeks passed, like a few, um, a few weeks passed, maybe six weeks passed, or a month passed, a uh, month and a half, and he didn't really think about what he saw, but he didn't see Jibreel again after maybe one month or two months. So it like just, um, you know, that 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 scene, um, that um, of Jibreel alayhi salam coming to Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, that um, that scenario sort of died down, like it didn't happen for about two months. Suddenly, he then saw Jibreel once again. He saw him again. And this time again, the Prophet وسلم, he came rushing down. He came rushing down to Khadija, Radilan again. And again, this time he was really scared. 
So just like the first time when, you know, um, the, when um, the first revelation, Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalik the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very scared and he came running to Khadija. Then two months later, again this happened. He saw Jibreel alayhi salam again for the second time. This is what we understand. And he came running to Khadija again. And he was very scared because just imagine seeing Jibreel alayhi salam, like the full figure, like one wing is the whole size of the whole sky. And he's, you know, you would get scared. So he came running down out of fear. And this time when he came running down to Khadija, he, and he said, you know, to Khadija radiallahu cover me. This is when Khadija radiallahu covered him. So this is referring to al mudathir the one covered, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi was covered. You know, like someone, you can imagine if someone is under the cover of like a bed sheet, they're hiding under the cover, like they're a bit scared. So this is more out of fear, al mudathir he was scared. But um, this is when then Surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reveals Surah al mudathir You know, he said, Ya ayyuh al mudathir the one covered up. What should you do? Kum fa'anzir. Stand up and warn people. Stand up, like stand up and come out of this fear zone. And after this, you know, he had, he had so much fear. After this, the Prophet وسلم, after the surah was revealed, he never got scared again. Subhanallah. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sort of um, helped him in this. So kum fa'anzir. Like stand up and warn people. That's your job. Um, to stand up and warn people. So we understand this surah was revealed before the Muzammil, before Surah 73. So his task is to stand up and actually warn people about this message. Accept this task, like warn people, throw aside your safety of like being secure and like your uh, covering. So, So, you know, just uh, magnify the, the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, you know, prioritize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure you're very pure like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him some advice make sure you're pure from the inside make sure your heart is pure, make sure your clothes are pure and, and just uh, um, stop all the form of, forms of idolatry tell people to stop all forms of idolatry like um, give up idol worship and and don't actually if you do any good deed, make sure you do good deeds for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't do good deeds for other people, for the sake of other people. Or don't do good deeds expecting to get a favor back. Like do good deeds only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, uh, you know, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Well, like for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be patient. Like be really patient. So this is the, the few ayat, ayat at the start of Surah Al-Mudathir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving some advice to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like, um... Um, you know, be really patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are very, full, very, very powerful, these ayats. So these first few ayats, these are revealed at this time. And then maybe after one year, then one year passed by, then the next portion of the surah was revealed, al mudathir And this is very amazing because, um, you know, we're just talking about some of the key things about the surah and, you know, something, that, things that we can learn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It tells us, you know, um, stand up, warn, you know, be brave, do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be patient, don't um, do, uh, expect to get uh, favors back from people. And after about one year, after about one year, what happened was the second, the rest of the surah was revealed. So there's a gap of about one year. And the next portion of the surah, which was revealed, you know, um, just further down, which was revealed, is about, is describing somebody, the father of Khalid bin Ibn uh, Walid, Khalid bin Walid. His Khalid bin Walid, he is the famous like fighter, the warrior, right? His father was Walid Wal uh, ibn Mughera. Walid ibn Mughera. And he's like, you know who he was? He was, um, he had so much money, his father. His dad had so much money. He was like, um, um, you know, like somebody in society. Yeah, he's one of the leaders. He's rich. He's powerful. He's a leader. Everybody looks up to him. He's somebody from the Quraysh. Everybody respected him. He had so much money. When he heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah? I have a question. Like, question. Do you know when he like went to street or he walking? Did like anybody said, Can I have some my can, can I have some of your money? Or ask him anything? Um, he may have been the case. Um, but you know, I, um, uh, yeah, and people may have done, but yeah, he's very rich. He's from the Quraysh. Then did he so, give it to them? So um he may or may he may not have done because um he may not have been that charitable, but you know, he, he may have done as well. But, um, because he was one of the people who was friends with Abu Jahl, you know, like the uh, Abu Jahl, the enemy of um, the Prophet. So, when Walid ibn Bukhira, he heard the Prophet, وسلم, 
the first time he was stunned because he recognized poetry he thought he thought to himself this is amazing and he was silent like imagine a public figure being quiet he didn't say anything in public he was quiet he was stunned and he was like the most famous person the wealthy person abu jahal his friend said to him why are you quiet that's not good enough the people are waiting for a response from you the people are looking up to you and you're quiet you hear the prophet وسلم, you don't say anything what are you influenced by him so abu jahal said you cannot maintain your silence you have to do something about this and walid ibn Mughira said give me some time let me think about it let me think about this so he knew it deep down something this is the truth but let me think about this and the next the next few ayat which you know the ayat which were revealed are so amazing because Subhanallah, you know when Walid ibn Mughira, he was in his house by himself, he was thinking, he was, he was plotting in his mind, mm, what shall I say about Prophet ﷺ? What shall I say about this revelation? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran exactly what he was thinking. And no one else could have known this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him in the privacy of his house thinking, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, he frowned, his forehead bulged, he turned back, he walked this way. The ayat, the ayat of the Quran in this surah are to that level, describing him thinking, walking back and forth. And finally, when he makes up his mind, what he thinks, he says, In hadha illa sihrun yusr. This is nothing but magic. In hadha illa kawlul bashar. This is nothing but speech of a human being. So, this is what he came up with in his house. But, but, subhanAllah, you know what happened? When he was thinking this in his house, I'm going to say, Oh, the Prophet, he, this is just magic. This is only the words of a human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he already revealed the Quran. He already revealed the ayat in the Quran, describing him thinking. So in the Quran, the people already knew what he was thinking. So what, when he went out of his house, they said to everybody, okay, I have now made up my mind about what the Prophet, who he is. The people said, we already know. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us in the Quran that you're going to say that he's a magician and you're going to say this is a speech of a human being. So people already knew before he even told the people. So subhanAllah, this just shows you about the miracle of the Quran. And it, you know, some uh, it's made something amazing that um Allah Hal obviously um what he revealed was just to show the Quraysh that the the, the, the plot of this person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, this person is gonna be in the hellfire because he um he was trying to um um you know uh, you know, accepting the truth, he knew the truth, but he rejected it, you know, like um Kufr we were talking about. So again, this is something really amazing. And yeah, did you have a question before we carry on? Yeah, like do you know I have wait, I have three questions. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. My first question is like, like, did he know that it was gonna be their judgment sometime? So he didn't he knew but he didn't accept it, he rejected it because he And then yeah. my second question was like like did like do you know before like did he like become muslim so no he rejected so he didn't become muslim because uh, he was influenced by um abu jahal okay. abu jahal and the people yeah my first question is yeah. like when he is going to be punished to go health file or something yeah like did he like did he say anything no i believe islam straight away you know uh, no he didn't accept islam because in your lifetime you have to accept islam so that's I mean, what we like, understand before like when when they're gonna get punished, like at the last second, did he say, "I believe in the Islam, I believe in Islam"? And uh, no, I I don't. He didn't do that when he was um, you know, when he I think he died in the battlefield. I think it was it um, Battle of Badr, maybe, or I, I can't remember. He died some, um, but no, he didn't. He didn't accept Islam. Um, so that's what we understand. So and and then you know later on the surah, the surah is really amazing. That there's another something very amazing. He takes us into the future. He talks about a conversation that the people in Jannah, they're going to they're be sitting with each other, talking, and they're going to be asking about the people of the hellfire because they're going to think, you know, uh, we uh, and we understand from the way they're asking this, these are potentially these are so-called Muslims they knew who ended up in the hellfire. So they're going to be asking, sitting there, and they're going to be asking about some people who didn't make it to Jannah. They're going to be saying, I wonder what happened to these people these people of Jahannam and what happened is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he opens up a door or something like that he allows the people in Jannah to talk to the people of the hellfire and the people in Jannah they say like how on earth did you end up in the hellfire there's a conversation which takes place between the people of Jannah and the people of Jahannam so this is really amazing if you think about it that 
this conversation takes place and the first thing they ask them obviously is how on earth did you end up in the hellfire like you used to be with us you used to go you know we used to be maybe like a, we used to work together maybe used to go our kids used to go to the schools together you know we, we used to see each other but how on earth did you end up in the hellfire like what happened and you know the first thing they say the people of the hellfire why they why they ended up in the hellfire they say Lam min we were not of those who prayed our salat regularly we were not of those who prayed oh, us last week. Subhanallah. So this is really amazing. Um, okay, very quickly. Like, do you know when they were saying the thing? Yeah, like, did they like have a choice to say, or did it come automatically out of their mouth? So this has happened automatically. This is what the people of the Hellfire are telling them because this is how they ended up. Okay, and yeah, like, yeah. I need to know one more thing. Like, is anybody really in like Hellfire or like a Jannah? right now so we are we understand um there isn't anybody at the moment um so, like, so where, basically it's ready for who died so whatever. they are they are in um in the, in the life of the grave the barzak so either that's good or bad for the people depending on how they are so Allah, Allah, inshallah we understand that but um yeah so they say we're not of those who, who did our salat prayed our salat regularly and then what happened? We didn't do that. What else did we do? Well, and we, we were not of those who used to feed the poor again. And what else did we do? We used to waste time with people who used to waste time. We used to waste so much time. Be that, you know, like um, pointless things, you know, spending hours and hours like on TV or games or just like completely waste our time. This was a result of us not being with those who prayed regularly. And, uh, you know, because be very careful when you, you know, when we make it a habit to sit down, play games or just sit down and for hours and hours. Some people, they just, you know, do pointless wasting time. And if you think about it, what sort of conversations are these? You know, these are conversations people are having, which don't mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is like a waste of time. So if you if for hours and hours, people are sitting there and not mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what else did they, these people say? They say, um, and we we um, we used to lie against the day of judgment. We used to think the day of judgment is not going to happen at all. Until what? It happened. Until the reality came to us. What's that? And, until death came to us. And death came to these people, and they suddenly they knew this was real. So I think the lesson again is here, like we said in the previous surahs we were talking about. Um, they regret that they did not pray regularly. They were they not the slat did not give their prayer the importance, and that gave them a that led them to a downward spiral. So inshallah, you know, we should actually keep up the Islam to protect us and um, you know allow us to um, be of those who um, who um, who um, reach Jannah, and we we keep up with our prayers. So this was you know very important something in the surah, and um, so subhanallah, you know, um, and then towards the end of the surah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he also described the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As, as, a, as like a lion and he describes those people who don't believe in him like a zebras and donkeys running away they're running away and you know uh, there's some psychology involved in this like the people who don't want to believe sometimes you know they don't want to hear the truth they, they are just like you know zebras, uh, zebras and donkeys trying to run away from like the message it's a psychological thing because they don't want to hear the truth and that's how the, the image of Allah SWT is very very powerful so you know this just some points about the surah but this is just uh, i thought it would be quite good for us to learn from so which are you know so the story number five the messenger 73 al the one wrapped up the prophet وسلم, was the one wrapped up in a blanket in comfort but but Allah SWT says to him stand for the tahajjud prayer the night prayer remember Allah SWT. he was also al he was the one covered up out of fear but now Allah SWT is saying to him yeah, you have mudathir. Come for and there. Stand up and warn people. So you need to warn people, right? That's your job. And what should you warn people about? Can anybody tell me Islam. about? Yeah, the next surah, number seventy-five. What's one of the main things? One of the main, yeah. What's one of the main things? Even tajud, but to do that. But what? What's one of the main things you need to warn people about? What's coming up around Islam. the corner? Oh, oh, wait. What's the coming day, up? Day, 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 day of judgment. The day of judgment. Yes, that's coming right around judgment the corner. Day. So another name for the Day of Judgment is Surah number 75. So you should also, you should warn people about Surah number 75? Yeah. Al-Qiyamah. Yeah? La-Ukasimu bi yawm al-Qiyamah. Yeah? 
Allah SWT swears by this, the day of Qiyamah. Now, Qiyamah is another name for the day of judgment. And does anybody know what does Qiyamah, what does it mean? The root word as well is Tan Qiyam, comes from, you know, uh, there's a root there. Uh, what does Qiyam mean, or Qiyamah? The day of what? How do you describe it? Qiyamah is? Oh, day of judgment coming up. Is the day of judgment? Uh, it's a day of judgment, and specifically, what is it? Kiyama, it means it is kiyam, like you know, when you stand for when you kiyam, when you when when you do the ikama for a prayer, ikama, um, kiyam, it basically means standing. So, al kiyama is the day of standing up, and we know what that means because on the day of judgment, you're gonna you be can't sit down. you're gonna stand up, people are gonna stand up when they're resurrected from their graves, and they're gonna stand up and see the deeds in front of them. So again this is a really powerful um revelation and it reminds us of the day of judgment and it's really like um you when you go for this really beautiful eloquent and Allah SWT says you know he swears and he swears by the nafs of lawama are uh, uh, the nafs as well um, um which um you know keeps changing so Allah SWT, he says at the beginning he says that um you know that you know what people question how can how can our bones how can we be raised again you know when we're bones like i'm slam exactly again for doing problem how can we be raised again when we're bones that's what people say right at the beginning of the surah Allah Spantana mentions what people say but you know what Allah Spantana says your bones i can even reconstruct your fingertips you know the fingertips the the pattern of the fingertips Allah SWT says, I can even reconstruct your fingertips. So why do you think that I can't reconstruct your bones? Like, Allah SWT is all powerful, right? So he says, um, you know, it's no problem. You know, it's no problem for Allah SWT, the, the day of judgment, to re resurrect the people again. On that day, people are going to testify against themselves. They're going to like, literally, you know, um, they're going to testify against themselves what they did. And they're going to basically, despite excuses, and they're going to make excuses, but their excuses are not going to be accepted on that day. You know, all the things they did, they're going to try and make excuses, not going to be accepted. And this surah also mentions something um, about the revelation. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa says, um, "La taharik bihi lisanaka la tajalabi." Like to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, don't move your tongue quickly, trying to um, memorize the Quran. Inna alayna jamahu wa Qur'ana. Like it's the job of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's His job to collect it and recite it to you. So in other words, you know when Jibreel used to recite um, the Quran, that was really Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reciting it to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because it's from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So He says that it's the job of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to recite the Quran to you. So when you recite it, um, fatta bi Qur'ana. So follow the Quran. So basically, what used to happen is that you know. Um, when Jibreel used to come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to come and um, in the early stages, before Jibreel would finish an ayah, so imagine he comes and he's telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about, he may be, I don't know, what uh, duha, or layli idha sajah. Or ghashia. Yeah, or ghashia, yeah, or any surah. Before Jibreel Alayhi Salam has finished saying the ayah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he straight away began to repeat it. So when, um, for example, the Prophet says, he's saying, what do her? What do her? What do her? But Jibreel Islam he hasn't finished the ayah, but the Prophet is repeating it. Why? Because he's afraid that he might forget it. You're just like we would do. We'd be like, and how how can I remember this? It's very difficult for me, you know, because he was concerned about this, just like any any of us would be. He kept on repeating it. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, said to him, "Don't worry. You know, you're not going to forget it. Don't forget it. We're, we're going to make sure in your heart and mind that this um, uh, the the ayat stay in your heart and mind." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Inna alayna jam'ahu wa Qur'an. It's the job of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather it and compile it in your heart. And you just follow the recitation. So this shows, basically, you know, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it to us, like, it's going to be automatic. You're going to hear something and you're going to remember. So this is a miracle. That when, you know, when we hear the Qur'an sometimes, when we, um, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to obviously say the uh, ayat to the Qur'an lots of times, remember. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he just said it once. And he remembered it. That was a miracle. So again, uh, this is um, something that you know is um, quite amazing, and um, we should, um, yeah, we should uh, uh, we take a lesson from it as well in terms of um, you know rushing. Don't rush when you recite. Yeah, you have a question. Yeah, like 
like do you know like when the popular one was was like it's reciting a yeah. It's a long song, yeah? Like when he was like reciting of the did he say it three times? So he used to um no then he just said it once and he remembered. So and this like, was a miracle. And so. like also like like um like also when he recited, yeah. Like, did he forget anything or miss any words or like any that? So, no, I mean, after he didn't because whatever he recited, Alif Mantala made sure that he remembered it. And that was a miracle. So, um, this is something. And also in the surah, there's something very beautiful Alif Mantala mentions later oh, on. He me? says, Like, is that why we repeat sometimes? So, we, we repeat because we need to remember it. Because just like for us, the Prophet, Prophet said, yeah, but his, he had a miracle. Allah made sure that he does he just says it once and he remembers it. That was the difference. Because um, but we need to obviously make the effort, we get rewarded for it, inshallah. Um but Allah mentions in the surah, Yoma Nadira, something very amazing. On that day, faces are gonna be bright. They're gonna be very bright. Why? Yeah, yeah, Nadira, Ila Why? Because they're gonna see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on that day. Um, it reminds us it's the biggest blessing of Jannah is going to be, you know, as well as the amazing things around the things we're going to have, the biggest blessing is going to be that we're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the surah that on that day, faces are going to be so bright because they're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we understand, like we talked about this, like um, every Juma uh, in Jannah, you're gonna, like, have shopping there's going to be yeah, a meeting place. Clothes. You're going to go, you're going to go shopping, and after that, you're going to sit down and they're going to be, you're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every Juma. Like it's going to be amazing. So, Really, uh, this is a massive blessing. Mel Spanta allows to be of those who, um, you know, who um, whose faces are bright because we see him on the um, in Jannah. So, and again, and Allah Spanta also mentioned that towards the end of this ayah, um, surah, do people think they're going to be left alone? No. Like, um, do they think that um, they're just going to be left alone or without any guidance? Because if you think about it, um, Spanta, you know, the one who created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has to guide us as well because it's impossible to imagine a creator. Like, just it's impossible. Like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's created the whole universe in perfection the sun, the moon, the ratio of gases, the, the, the perfect water cycle. Everything is perfect. So, how can it be that a perfect creator, he leaves us alone and he doesn't give us any guidance? It doesn't make sense because it doesn't befit um, the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, there has to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, there has to be um, a God Almighty. And he has to have told us as well. He has to have given, given us guidance. And that's another reason how we know Islam is the truth. So, there, you know, and this guidance, this guidance is even more important than the creation because do you remember we talked about in Surah Ar Rahman? Allah SWT says, Ar Rahman, what is, what's next? Allah al Quran. He taught the Quran, Khalaq al Insan. Then he created people, humankind. So, this guidance is even more important than the creation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, yes, he, he doesn't leave us alone. He's given us guidance. So we need to follow this guidance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So um, this is really important. So even the Quran comes before um, the creation of, of human beings. So what we're saying is out of fear now, warn other people, the Prophet وسلم, has to stand up, warn people about Qiyamah, the day of standing up. So don't stand up. So maybe we'll finish with one more um, surah. Don't stand up too proud. So you stand up, that's fine. On the day of Qiyamah, you know, they're standing up. So when you stand up, but don't be too proud, like the arrogant, like the arrogant. And the next surah, can anybody help me with this? So if you stand up, don't be so proud and arrogant. Just don't be so proud, like some people who are. Jealous. Surah number 76 is Surah Al Insan. Al Insan, because in the Surah, this Surah is also called Ad Dahar time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Surah something very amazing. Like, um, um, Hal Atal Al Insan, Hinu Munatah, Lam Yakun Shay Ammadkura. Like, there was a time when the human being wasn't even known. Like, how can you be so proud and arrogant? Like, you walk around on the earth like you own everything. There was a time, just imagine, like, one year before you were born, like, whatever year you were born, just imagine, um, 
one year before uh, you were born. By the way, this surah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to recite this uh, every Friday. Um, as this and surah sajda in the Fajr salat. So this surah reminds us. Allah subhanahu wa reminds us. Al insan means a human being. Reminds us to be very um, thankful to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says, wasn't there a time recently that you were you were not even known? So just imagine, like one year before you were born, no one knew about you, right? One year before you were born, no one knew your name, no one knew who you were, no one knew that you were going to be born, no one knew your existence, no one knew your characteristics. That's what Alasfant says, you know, you weren't even a thing worth mentioning before. So um, there was a time. So in other words, don't be so proud and arrogant, be humble. This is something we learn. And he's the one who says he created us from like a mixture of drop of fluid. Why? To test us, to test us, you know. Um, that's why, and he made us Samiyam um, Basira. Uh, he made us um, hearing and seeing only to test us. So this eyesight that you have, eyes and hearing, is only to test us who does good things. So we should, you know, and then, um, you know, and he showed us the path. We should, the path, either, either you can be thankful or you can be even worse. You can be ungrateful. He showed us the two ways. So we should use his faculties of hearing and sight, be humble, and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes the people, the good people as well. Um, and, um, you know, he describes um, Jannah in detail. It's a very amazing surah. He describes Jannah in detail. What's going to be in Jannah? There's going to be like gold, silver, cups. There's going to be amazing things. There's going to be like young um, people, young boys who are going to be serving. You know, you're going to be sitting there. Things are going to start. Fountains are going to start appearing from your house and your palace. Like, you won't have to make any effort. This is an amazing description for Jannah. And even... Some of us have said that this description of Jannah is specifically um, is for the women as well, because um, it was given following the, um, um, you know, the kindness and act of kindness that Fatima, she, she did as well. So, Alas Mantala mentions in here some characteristics of the true believers. And one of the characteristics is they, they feed their own food, even though they need it. They feed their own food to the miskeen, the poor people. The orphans and the prisoners as well. They feed the food to the prisoners, and this is what Fatima Radiyallahu did. And why prisoners? Because you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned prisoners because prisoners basically people don't have any compassion for prisoners. They don't really um, care about prisoners. Like someone who's a prisoner, he's looked down upon. Who is this? Like this prisoner? Like but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says they even give food to the prisoners, prisoners of war, because these are not from your background, right? They're not from your place. They're from somebody else. They're from somewhere else. They've done something really bad. And yet, they're still human beings, right? They still need to be fed. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, they are, you know, they still they feed they feed the prisoners as well. So, you know, um, some of the qualities of the believers Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is mentioning. So, inshallah, you know, what we'll do, we'll continue next week. Um, and um, so Surah Al Insan, the human being, don't stand up too proud like the arrogant Al Insan, human being. Instead, remember a dahar, a time. The humans didn't even exist, and we didn't even exist. Just remember this time. So don't be so proud and arrogant. So, inshallah, you know, we'll carry on talking about the rest of this surah uh, and going forward in the next session. At the moment, what we do, we can read over the beginning of the story. So, can I do? And the, after, if we have time, can we Okay, my book? we have a few minutes. So, after my book. okay, you can just read over, read over the story, inshallah, starting from story five, the messenger. I hope I and then, um, yeah, if you have a few minutes, so inshallah, okay, go ahead. And then you can do it. So, yeah, just from the beginning. Story 5, The Messenger. Al Muzammil, the one wrapped up in a blanket in comfort, comfort, but stand for Tahajjid prayer to remember Allah. He also, Al Mudathir, the one covered out of fear but now warn others about al qiyama the standing up don't stand up too proud like the arrogant al insan the human being instead remember a dark time humans didn't exist but okay so that will be the next surah so um, this is how we're linking it together. Um, the day of standing up is al qiyamah Don't stand up too proud and arrogant, like too proud like the arrogant al insan human being. Instead, remember al dahr 
Adahar means time, a time when you didn't even exist. Like, you know, uh, humans didn't even exist. So don't be too proud. Submit yourself, humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use your hearing and your sight. It's a test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to benefit and um, you know, bless you all and your families and allow us to um, gain an understanding and love and appreciation of the Quran. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiru ka wa So, uh, we, we have about a minute or so. And Jazakallah Khan, everyone, for listening and um, attending. And we have a minute. Yeah, you can read your next chapter if you want. We have a minute. I need to get my hand. You won't have enough time, so just do it from here. Okay. Okay. Inshallah. Let's go. Uh, shall I read from where we left? Shall I read from the beginning or not? Oh, you can carry on from where you left. Afsar the daughter. Umar so yeah, she's a very um, good role model for us to follow, a very good example. Which one was that one? Which one five? Five, okay. Hafsa is also known as a custodian of the Book of Allah. She was one of a few women who could read or write at the time. And so she was entrusted with the verses of the Quran. She had saved them in writing as well as preserved them in hearted. Okay, inshallah.